Grant, and also the co-founder and director at Ground Nation Greater, which is a grassroots non-governmental organization that does create a focus work as well, but in general a human rights activist and a living man, Mr. Richie. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. I know. Um, so just to kind of build on what Amelka was saying, I am from Grenada, where I, I co-founded uh, Social Collective, a human rights based organization. Currently, I work in Trinidad with KAISO, which stands for the Coalition Advocating for Inclusion of Sexual Orientation, um, as well as with a regional organization called CARIFLANS, Caribbean Forum for Liberation and Acceptance of Genders. Um, and sexualities. Um, and I'm here to, 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 to talk to you today about masculinity as it relates to sexual diversity and sexual acceptance, um, which, as you may all well know, is something that has been a rather prominent topic in, in the headlines um, recently. So, for instance, in my capacity as, as Atonia Blog, um, we've been to the different constitutional consultations where we've been advocating for equality. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about that, about masculinity, and particularly Caribbean masculinity, masculinity as it relates to sexual diversity and acceptance of sexual diversity. Now, just bear with me, right? I just had to kind of scribble on some small notes, and sometimes I find it difficult to understand when I write handwriting. Not only, not only doctors are bad and everything, right? Lawyers too, so just, just bear with me for, for, for a moment. Now, perhaps it might be useful to start with that, with that definition of masculinity. And, and my friend who, who spoke before me, I think, he made a quite good one good afternoon. And he described masculinity as, you know, being a man essentially. Um, my, my own definition is, is, not, is not very far from that. I define masculinity as the ideas associated with being a man. And of course, in, in the Caribbean, Caribbean masculinity would be the ideas associated with being a man in the Caribbean. Also useful, I think it would be to indicate or define sexuality. It's often difficult to give a precise definition of sexuality. But what I would say is that sexuality is made up of diverse elements, right? And those elements include desire, experience, behavior, and identity. So for instance, if someone has a homosexual experience, does that mean they identify as homosexual? Not necessarily, and they don't. So all of these things go into, go into, go into sexuality. So what, what is the kind of nexus point between the two? Well, let's consider it. How many people are aware of the comments that master artists, as we call them, New York Clark made a couple of weeks ago um, in the media concerning, concerning homosexuality? Just, just indicate by raise of hands how many people are aware. OK, so for the people who are not aware, Leroy Clark, seemingly out of the woodwork, out of the blue, um, made the statement in the news that the LGBT advocacy movement, or that the strive for equality, was an affront of, among other things, masculinity, and that it was a ploy to feminize men. Um, quite ridiculous, if, if you ask me. Now, now I think that that argument is, is quite faulty. Because, of course, they are feminine homosexuals, but they are also quite masculine homosexual men. But I think that discourse, that argument, is quite important because it, it calls into question some very interesting things, which, 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 I'd, which I'd like to kind of discuss. One of the things it, 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 it showed, it assured, was that, or, or one of the things I can link that statement to, was that, Leroy Clark is coming from a very particular place of Caribbean masculinity. And at many times in the Caribbean, we assume that masculinity is a package which often includes homophobia. And so Caribbean masculinity and, and Caribbean masculine identity is often identified very much with being homophobic, um, with being fearful of homophobia, and with chanting the homosexual people. Now, as I indicated, Clark's arguments are, are faulty, but I, I, I want to kind of unpack the argument a little bit. Now, in 2012, the Caribbean Development Research, Research Services, CADRIS, um, and its founder, Peter Wickham, did a poll study which was funded by, by the UN. It concerned Trinidad and Tobago, um, Barbados, and Guyana. And the research was was done to sort of determine our attitudes in the Caribbean world, at least in these three countries, towards homosexuality. 
And some very interesting things emerged from that study. One of them was um, that men are a lot less tolerant of homosexuality than women are. How many people inside here would disagree? Would, would agree with that statement, for instance? Right. So the, the research actually indicated that. Um, the research also indicated. So, as I indicated, the research indicated that, that men are a lot less um, tolerant than, than women in, in relation to, to, to homosexuality. But what some other research has indicated is that men aren't necessarily more religious than women. So, religion doesn't necessarily define the issue. So, that suggests to me very specifically that. This, our attitudes towards homosexuality in the Caribbean is informed by our sense of masculinity and femininity, and, and femininity, um, which attaches, of course, to being, being man or woman mostly um, in, in the Caribbean. Now, in my work as a sexual and reproductive rights activist, um, I've uncovered and discovered that male attitudes towards male homosexuals and female homosexuals differ. So for instance, in large part, and for those of you who watch porn, you all would know, lesbians are fetishized. But not every man fetishizes lesbians. There are men who have a problem with lesbians, and even the men who have a problem with lesbians, the problem that they have with lesbians is different from the problems that we have with male homosexual men. So for instance, our research has um, uncovered that in large part, the problem that men have with, with, with lesbian women, when they do have a problem with lesbian women, is that they are considered to be sort of overstepping their boundaries. So she's trying to be a man or what, where she's seen, you know, she's transgressing gender in that she's trying to assume a particular position that is reserved for men. The problem that men have with male homosexuals is a bit different. The issue has to do with their conception that that man is demeaning himself. So in other words, he's also trans just transgressing gender, but in a slightly different way. And let me, let me sort of explore the nuance. Just give me a minute. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the nuance is this. I think it's, it's, it's based on um, a binary. So for instance, Men who have problems with male, with male and, and female homosexuals it very much come from a place of seeing gender as this very specific binary. And while women, lesbians, are seen as a problem because they trans just get gender and are trying to assume um, privilege, privileges, I, I would say, and we explore that, that concept more, that attach to men, male homosexuals are seen as demeaning the male body. So there's this way that males police the male body and we need to kind of understand why that is um, and in my research and in, in the research of others what we've uncovered is that in this binary there is not equality so for instance the issue it has to do with the fact that one there are very fixed ideas of, about what a man does and what a woman does and a man is strong a man is assertive sexually a man is the one who does the be beaten out um, you know, and women get beat out, women are passive. And people, generally speaking, men and women, see this binary as attaching to sex. Now, you all understand the difference between sex and gender, right? Yeah. All right, excellent. Now, to, 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 to be very brief, sex is, is biological. Um, testes, penis, vagina, ovaries, genders, roles, and behaviors associated with maleness or, or with maleness or femaleness. So, there's this binary that is established, and people assume, generally speaking, that the privileges, the idea that, that are associated with maleness are fixed. So, for instance, by virtue of the fact that I have a male body, I assume a particular place of privilege, and I assume an almost automatic difference, as in I would be assertive. I would be the one doing the beating out in a particular sexual dynamic. What male homosexuals present is a challenge to that particular binary. 
Well, one, because people assume that male homosexuals are or feminine or feminized, which is not true. Um, but also because, five more minutes, whoa, 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 I had a rush boy. Uh, yeah, but also because a male homosexual is seen as sort of challenging that binary. Well, if a man can be this, can be feminine, then what does it say for my, for the automatic difference I assume? Then that difference no longer becomes automatic. It will become sort of fluid. It sort of becomes something that can go either way. And that is seen as a challenge to masculinity. And so that by and large is, is one of the reasons that men have more of a problem with male homosexuals than, than female homosexuals. Um, now, I want to say this. I actually used to be a homophobe, um, which is strange, because of course now I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sexual rights activist. Um, and the fact that I used to be a homophobe suggests something very interesting, that our idea of masculinity is not fixed. Because remember earlier we were suggesting that part and package and of, of, of what we consider to be the parcel of Caribbean masculinity is homophobia. And that, of course, isn't fixed. It's fluid. So for instance, in my university days, I used to be one of them people in sessions, putting up my hands in the bandas, um, going by by so on. Of course, I, you know, I've, I've, made, I've made an about him because I, I honestly think homophobia is, is ignorance by and large. Um, and I've been exposed to arguments. I've been exposed to the knowledge and the research that has allowed me to kind of deconstruct, deconstruct um, my mind from that. But very interestingly, this idea of masculinity as um, embodying, among other things, homophobia is problematic. Now, Professor Rex Nettleford, Rex Nettleford from um, Jamaica and, and other, research, other researchers in the Caribbean have done research and they have determined that this idea of masculinity and, and the associations and the incorporation of homophobia into that is presenting some very interesting issues for men. One of it is the issue of well, what they call male marginalization, which is not really marginalization because males aren't marginalized. But masculinity and, and, and masculinity in, in many ways is failing men in that men don't want to be ever perceived as feminine, as feminized, and so they avoid academic pursuits, academic excellence, um, poetry, that sort of, uh, that sort of thing, and, and they end up under, underperforming academically, which certainly is a problem. Um, that also is a problem because it forecloses very otherwise meaningful engagements with people who are people, you know, we, we, we kind of no longer see the humanity of people and we, and we become caught up on people's sexuality. Um, it also forecloses rather more meaningful relationships with women because remember, um, homophobia as part of masculinity is based on a binary and in that binary there is not equality. So, and many people don't discuss this explicitly, but based on many of the arguments for homophobia here, when you really unpack those arguments, you'll see that it involves a devaluation of femininity in relation to masculinity, which of course is problematic. And I think it's, it's quite important for males like myself to come out, um, straight males like myself particularly, to come out and, and stand against homophobia. What it does, um, or what it achieves, is that it, it challenges this idea of masculinity as including automatically homophobia. It also challenges this idea of masculinity as, as fixed and fluid, which is one of the flaws with Leroy Clark's argument. Because his argument sort of assumes that masculine, masculinity is this particular thing that doesn't change across culture, across space, and across time, which of course is, is nonsense. And what I would like to see for the Caribbean is a masculinity that is absolutely more embracing um, of sexual and gender equality. Um, and in the interest of time, that's where I'll end. Thank you very much for listening. Yes.